Hi, my name is John, and in this video, I will be explaining the proofs of Kepler's second and third laws of planetary motion. To briefly go over the first law, it states that a planet revolves around the Sun in an elliptical orbit with the Sun at one focus, which can be illustrated by the diagram shown. The second law states that the line joining uh, the Sun to a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal times. This means that if, it, uh, if the time it takes for the planet to go from position A to position B is equal to the time it takes from position C to position D, both areas A1 and A2 will be equal. We'll derive this law in four steps. But before we begin, here are some of the equations established from the proof of the first law, uh, which are necessary for the second law. R is a position vector of the planet with respect to time in the x and y uh, coordinates. We can write this vector in polar coordinate form where r cos theta is in the i hat direction and r sine theta is in the j hat direction. We also know that the derivative of the position vector r is the, uh, the velocity vector v. And finally, vector h equals cross product of the vectors r and v. Our first step is to show that vector h equals r squared d theta by dt in the k hat direction. From the first law, we know that vector h equals vector r cross vector v. We also know that vector r is this, and velocity vector is the derivative of vector r. So using product rule, we can write the vector v as shown here. We can now apply the cross product of the two vectors r and v, which gives us the perpendicular vector h in the z axis. So the vector can be uh, expressed as shown here. And since the vector is in the z axis, it's in the k hat direction. After simplifying this expression, we can show that vector h equals r squared d theta by dt in the k hat direction. The second step requires us to show that h equals r squared d theta by dt. So here we're basically showing the magnitude of the vector h as a scalar without direction k hat. So since the magnitude of vector h is simply h, we can show that the expression we previously derived can be written as this. In the third step, we need to show that dA by dt, which is the rate of the area that is swept by the planet, equals half r squared d theta by dt. We know that the area of a circle is 2 pi r squared. We can then use this equation to approximate the area of a sector of circle, which is half r squared delta theta. So using the area of a sector of circle, we first integrate with respect to theta. And then we differentiate uh, both sides with respect to time. This brings us to the equation dA by dt, which equals half r squared d theta by dt. In the final step of proving the second law, we need to show that dA by dt equals 1 half h, which is a constant. We can combine the equations previously derived from steps 2 and 3 to show that dA by dt does indeed equal 1 half h. Now we still need to show that h is a constant. To do this, we can show that its derivative equals 0. If we recall from step 1, vector h is a cross product of vectors r and v. From here, using product rule, we can express this as r prime cross v plus r cross v prime, which simply equals v cross v plus r cross a. We know that the cross product of vector and itself uh, gives us zero. And we also know that vectors r and a are parallel to each other, and thus the derivative of vector h is zero. Therefore, h is a constant, which proves Kepler's second law. 
The third law states that the square of the period of revolution is proportional to the cube of the length of the major axes of its orbit. We'll prove this law in three steps. First, we need to show that the period t is equal to uh, 2 pi ab over h. We know that the total area of an ellipse is equal to pi ab, where a and b are the semi-major and semi-minor axes, respectively. This is the equation we previously derived in the second law. We integrate the left side with respect to a and the right side with respect to t to yield this expression. We can then substitute pi ab uh, for a and rearrange for t, which gives us 2 pi ab over h. Next, we need to show that these three equations are all equal to each other. We know that h equals this, a squared equals this, and b squared equals this. From the proof of the first law, we, know, we also know these two equations for d and e. We can then simply substitute all of these equations and simplify to show that all, of, all three equations are essentially equal. In our final step, we need to show that the square of period t is proportional to the cube of the length of the major axes of its orbit. We know from step 1 that period t equals 2 pi ab over h. We can square both sides to give us this expression. Here is the equation from step 2, um, and this can be rearranged to give us h squared, which equals b squared gm over a. This can be substituted into the equation from step 1 to show that t squared equals 4 pi squared over gm a cubed. Now 4 pi squared over gm is just a proportionality constant um, and it, it is independent of the planet's motion. Therefore t squared is proportional to a cubed and this proves Kepler's third law. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.